Hi everybody, Scott Moss here again. Uh, another pediatric echo for the adult technologist. This one is on Peyton Faram and Ovales. Um, it's a shorter one because I feel as if uh, a Peyton Faramen, especially in a newborn, is pretty normal. But we'll go over some of the things that uh, you need to know and see, and uh, hopefully it'll be helpful to you. Uh, the prevalence of a PFO is about 25% in the general population. Um, this increases to 40 to 50% in patients who have a stroke of unknown cause. Um, this is especially true in patients who have a stroke before age 55. In some cases, the PFO combines with another condition such as atrial fib to increase the risk of stroke. Now, this is from the American Heart, Inst uh, Heart Association. I'm not positive how old this is. 25% um, of people is a lot. It's a, a significant amount of the population. Um, but for years, uh, it seemed like uh, if anybody had a stroke, we blamed it on a PFO. And uh, that was mainly in the adult world. Um, it's very rare in little kids to see a stroke or an infants, but um, in the adult world, it seemed like uh, every time a patient opened their mouth, they were shoving a TE probe down their throat. Um, and uh, eventually, there were so many false positives that, uh, or negative studies, I should say, that uh, a lot of um, insurance companies stopped paying for it because it felt like they felt like it was being overused. So um, it's one of those things that I want you to think about. There's a difference between adult echo and pediatric echo here. Um, it's, it's a big difference. Um, in newborns, it's almost always open, all right? Um, it's kind of the same thing as a uh, PDA. Um, it's usually open for 24 to 48 hours and then it'll close. Uh, most of them close on their own, although I found them in, you know, every age group you can think of pretty much. Um, Follow-up is recommended if you find one on a newborn that hasn't closed by 48 hours or so in the nursery, um, just to see if it does close. And then it's just a matter of watching and waiting for it to close. Um, and in some cases, it'll never close. It's just the way things are. So... Um, in peds, though, like I said, it's important to keep an eye on it if it is open for a longer period than 48 hours. Um, but a lot of times it just closes on its own. Um, the best views for this, in the pediatric views we talked about in the previous video, the views, the subcostal long axis usually visualizes the PFO best. Um, it's actually subcostal, more of a four chamber than a long axis, but Sometimes either one, of you'll get it. Um, you'll see the flow, and uh, if your screen is upside down like it should be, um, you'll see kind of a blue flow going away from the transducer because transducer will be on the top of the screen. Hold on, let me think if that's right. Um, it could be red, I don't know. Um, let me think. Da, da. Oh, well, forget it. I'm, there's flow there. And you'll see a turbulent flow and it's significant, um, so most of the time it's pretty easy to pick up. Um, you can sometimes see it in other views, but the flow may fool you, so be careful calling a PFO in the other view. Um, usually the flow is red, so I guess it's just me. I'm spacing out today. Um, flow should be left to right. Um, if the flow is right to left, you probably have a bigger problem on your hands. Uh, you should contact the pediatric cardiologist as soon as possible. There's a thing called persistent fetal circulation where the baby, for some reason, does not go into the normal circulation process and stays in the fetal circulation, which is quite different. So um, if that happens, then the pressures on the right side are higher, and that can cause significant issues um, if it goes for a long time. Um, the flap that is associated with a true PFO is not always visualized. Um, true PFOs have a flap usually. Um, it's on the left atrial side and it opens and closes just like a valve almost. Um, I was told years ago by a 
really great physician named Earl Silber, who wrote one of the biggest books on cardiology that I've ever seen, um, that it's really not a PFO on, if it doesn't have a flap on it. It's more of an ASD. So if you're looking and you don't see a flap, though, it's hard to tell because they can be very thin sometimes. And, you know, echo is great, but it doesn't always pick up everything. All right, you can see how the PFO involves a flap in the left atrium. Sometimes there is bidirectional flow. That's what this is showing here. Um, that would be um, if the right side of pressures are still high from the baby just being born. Um, I've seen this where the flow is bidirectional. Um, it's really not too alarming. It's when it stays bidirectional for any period of time that you do have to be worried a little bit. Um, especially um, neonates when the right-sided pressures have a tendency to be higher. So that's the flow going through it right there. So you should kind of look and see, is it is it truly going from left to right like it should? Um, if you see bidirectional flow, then, you know, get some good pictures and let the uh, peds cardiologist know. All right, this is an adult view of a PFO. It's very hard to find pictures of a PFO online. I don't know why, but in children, the view would be flipped upside down, so we would be looking at it the other way. But here's the PFO right here. You can see the flow going across it. Um, pretty, you know, easy to pick up when you see it in an adult, um, especially if you have a decent subcostal view, which this one is pretty good. Um, this PFO is, uh, you know, it's always hard to tell how big is it, you know, because um, there's some dropout here. Is that where the flap is or is that where there's a hole? So it's always hard to tell. So I always say to patients or to, I'm sorry, to uh, other techs that you can't really be sure how big it is. So, you know, sometimes we can get a measurement of it, but I don't know how accurate it is. So. 3D echo, um, I thought, showed the most potential for these kind of things, PFOs and ASDs, to actually uh, visualize the size of the opening and get a good idea of maybe what kind of device you were going to use to close it or whether you had to go in there surgically and close it. So, anyways. Here's a pediatric view of a PFO. Unfortunately, they didn't have the color flow on, but here's... Um, the opening right here and you can see that in this case it kind of goes this way um, sometimes they go this way sometimes they go this way sometimes they're higher up sometimes they're well higher up here sometimes they're lower here so it just depends and uh, it's really uh, one of those things that you have to you know you have to kind of watch for so um, if you do see dropout like this you definitely want to put the color flow on all right, here's an anatomical view of the heart with a PFO. So you have your left side, left atrium, left ventricle. Here's the PFO, and here's that flap I was talking about. So that will open and close as the pressures in the left atrium increase and decrease. Um, the right atrium here and the right ventricle, tricuspid, mitral, you guys all know this, I hope, by now. And uh, the flow going through there um, is minimal usually, but... Occasionally, if that flap is not there or not developed, there'll be a significant amount of flow going through there. Um, if that's the case, then you'll start to see the right atrium dilate and the right ventricle get a little bigger too. So something you want to watch out for. All right, so here's, I was right, it was red. Um, low velocity flow suggests a bigger hole. So here you see some yellows in here. So there's some high velocity, but there seems to be a significant amount of flow going across this PFO. So this would probably be considered a bigger one, but it's always hard to judge, um, you know, right off the bat, especially if it's a newborn. Um, you would want the child to come back and reevaluate it, see if it's still this size, and then maybe make a decision as to whether this is an ASD or is it a PFO. Um, I sometimes have a hard time figuring out which one is which, um, and I think most peds cardiologists would do the same. You know, it's it's just hard 
to tell. And at some point in time, you have to make a decision, you know, how long do we keep this open? Um, a lot of times, you know, people don't go in to have procedures done until later on because, you know, the heart's still growing and they don't want to put in a, you know, a piece that is not going to grow with the heart, so to speak. All right, this is a saline bubble study for a PFO and an ASD. Um, we do not do these in infants. Um, pretty uh, dangerous kind of procedure to do. So um, not only, you know, usually you want to push the uh, saline kind of fast. You don't want to do that in a baby. You blow the vein almost immediately. But here in an adult, this is a four-chamber view, and you can see what looks like um, the PFO flow going across here. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good shot. Somebody really got a good shot of it. And this is all bubbles crossing into the left atrium and the left ventricle. And usually what this involves is a Valsalva maneuver where they have the patient push down really hard, almost like they're having a bowel movement, and it will push the bubbles over to the side and into the LV. So that would be a positive study, and you would definitely, you know, want to tell this person that they do have a small hole in the heart, and what they do beyond that is up to them. All right, this is the PFO closure device that it's been out a little while now. Um, there are some patients who go for it. There are other people who don't believe in it. Um, I'm talking doctors wise, and uh, I think a lot of times. It's just, um, I think it's it's a lot better than having a surgical procedure done. But I think if you've had um, some sort of mild, you know, TIA or stroke and you, you know, you um, have recovered from it and they find a PFO, then you're probably better off having it closed. But um, a lot of times um, you really have to check with the insurance company and all the other things because, these devices are not always covered either, so it just depends upon the company. But it is a fantastic device because it's done through a catheter, it deploys on one side, and then you pull it back and it sticks right there, and then the other side right here is deployed. They look like little umbrellas, and then this detaches right here, and it's left in place, and it stays in place because of the pressures. And then uh, as time goes on, the tissue grows over them so um, it's a great great invention I'm I was very excited when I saw it because there was a lot of kids I figured who could have that procedure rather than a surgical procedure so okay now here's a controversial subject it's a you know stroke patients um, I think it's controversial because I think that patients with PFOs even though um, you know, if they if they do have a TIA or a stroke, everybody just assumes that it's from the PFO. I would like you to think about what the chances are of a small, tiny blood clot crossing from right to left when the pressures are definitely higher in the left side. What would have to happen is the patient would have to valsalva at the exact moment that a clot was in the right atrium. Um, can that happen? I suppose it can. Um, there's a thing called showering clots where maybe a clot breaks into several little pieces and goes into the right atrium. The patient valsalva is just at the right time and you can have a stroke. Um, I just don't believe that it's always the cause of the stroke. I think there's sometimes underlying things that they're not seeing. So anyhow, um, Study after study, and still no real definitive answer. Um, you know, it just depends upon which cardiologist you talk to. Some of them will say, oh, yes, it's definite, definite, you know. Others have gone to more of a, you know, if it's truly an ASD, yeah, that's probably what caused it. Um, strokes are very rare in babies, so you usually don't see something like that. Um, and like I said, the chances of it happening using a Valsalva maneuver at the exact time a clot goes in, I think it's pretty rare. But um, And like I said, the multiple clots entering the right atrium at once, um, it's more common with the true ASDs. And not all strict or stroke victims have a PFO. 
Now, I put TE for everyone because for years it seemed like every time a patient came in with anything resembling, you know, I mean, it was dizziness, it was lightheadedness, it was, um, you know, passing out, it was everything possible. I mean, it seemed like anything that, you know, pointed towards the possibility of a TIA or a stroke, um, this person got a TEE. And uh, for the longest time, I was afraid to open my mouth near a cardiac fellow in fear that I'd get a TEE. Um, it seemed like we were doing them on way too many people. And eventually that's what the insurance companies decided too, that we were doing them on too many people. And now it's cut back significantly. Um, do I believe, I'm not a big believer in TEE for everyone because I think it's a lot more invasive than people think. Yeah, you're numb and yeah, you're kind of loopy from the versed, but there's a lot of people who do remember what happens and it's not a pleasant test. So anyhow, for kids, we don't do it that often, but every once in a while we'll do a TEE. So um, I just wanted to throw my two cents in there and let you know, but it's a short but sweet, you know, one this week. Um, PFO, like I said, is very, very common in newborns. So I'm not going to make a big deal out of it because uh, you can find it pretty much in almost every newborn. Um, as a kid gets older, that's a different story, you know, then it, it becomes a more of a thing that they have to watch. So keep that in mind when you're doing your PEDS study and, you know, how to involve the PEDS cardiologist in the, in the study. Make sure you get a good subcostal four-chamber view and a long axis view because you want to make sure you get the entire atrial septum. PFO can appear anywhere. So, you know, you just want to make sure you get a good shot to make sure you're not missing any shunt. So, anyhow, that's it for this week. Next week, uh, probably do VSDs, all right? See ya.